Hi there, Todd Morgan with Tai Kung Fu of Idaho, Stronghold Martial Arts. I'm the Chief Instructor, and tonight we're going to talk about our upcoming series on sparring and critical distance techniques. Now, sparring and critical distance techniques are nothing new. Almost every style has them. Uh, I was at a Shaolin uh, Do school not too long ago watching their kids work their closing the gaps across the floor. Um, uh, tai Kung Fu being a Kempo derivative uh, has its own uh, that uh, you will find uh, in that style. When I boxed, the very first technique or set of combinations that we learned was the jab cross book, and we drilled it for hours in order to get that down. So this is nothing new. What I found though, because Tai Kung Fu of Idaho is a very much simplified Kempo system, and it, the Tai stands for Transitional Arts Incorporated, so there's a lot of different arts that are incorporated into our Kung Fu core. What I found was that a lot of the techniques that our students are taught, they're never actually taught to apply in a given situation. You may see some of them in the forums. You may see some of them in the self-defense. Others, they're simply taught, but they never actually get an opportunity to learn them. The other thing that you find, and I found this out when I was learning Shotokan all those years ago, um, over 30 years ago, uh, learning Shotokan was in a lot of martial arts, they don't learn how to apply their blocks. In Shotokan, we did. Okay? But it's important to know how to apply your blocks against an incoming technique. And I'm not just talking about in self-defense. And we are a self-defense oriented system, so we take it very seriously. But good sparring is another tool that gets you to good self-defense through the use of distancing, through the use of timing, reading an opponent, not getting flustered, being able to take a punch and give a punch, that sort of thing. So. I looked back at our sparring and critical distance techniques and I said, okay, what are we missing? Number one, we had three th a bunch of different things that we really needed to do. I wanted to be able to teach the students how to properly apply a block against an oncoming technique. Okay. Number two, they needed to be able to apply their techniques against an oncoming technique. And I'm not talking about self-defense techniques, I'm talking about in a sparring situation. Okay. Number three, they need to start learning how to use angles. Okay. And how do you learn angles in sparring? Well, I learned angles in sparring by sparring people who are a lot better than me, and there's plenty of them, uh, sparring people who are a lot better than me and learning how to get off the line with those people. And I had a couple of really good coaches and I had a couple of good boxing and kickboxing coaches who were more than happy to truly teach me the fine art of footwork and angling. And I really loved that. That's the one thing I loved was being a big guy, over 270 pounds, and having people not even being able to hit me. Okay. But how do I teach that to my students? That's something that I went and learned. I want to teach that to my students. So I wanted to teach them how to do, really work those angles. Okay. Timing. Timing's a vital thing. When it comes to sparring, I'll, have, I'll ask people, what kind of fighter am I? Am I an offensive fighter? Am I a defensive fighter? Am I a counter-offensive fighter? A lot of people think, oh, Todd's an offensive fighter, which often I am. But I actually per, prefer counter-offensive fighting because the devil's in the details. Counter-offensive fighting lets me use that collisional energy of the opponent coming in. And frankly, uh, I love hitting him as he's coming to get me. I, I love the game. I love the chess of it. It's chess, not checkers. So these are some of the things that we're trying to teach in the sparring and critical distance techniques. And you'll notice as we go from belt to belt during this series, white belts are learning the most basic thing. They're learning how to block, then punch. Yellow belts are learning how to angle, block, and then punch. Okay? The next belt level may be learning how to block and punch simultaneously. And then towards the end of that belt, angle and block and punch simultaneously. So they're incorporating their footwork with the angle, with the timing. Okay? You get up into the higher ranks, those people are learning interception. They're not learning how to, to deal with you before you actually even develop the technique. Okay? Uh, one of my favorite uh, is up towards the brown belt level where they're learning defanging. And the idea being is to perfect the timing to the point where you're actually hitting the opponent's technique as it's coming in and destroying his limb. Uh, a great example of something that you might want to see in that in the movies is the perfect weapon. Watch Jeff speaking of the perfect weapon uh, against the Taekwondo fighters in the uh, antique shop. Uh, he's very good at destroying their weapons. That's the purpose behind these. Now, with this series you're going to find there are three basic techniques in every single one of them. Three only. Okay. There are closing the gap techniques, and the critical distance is, the, is that distance between two fighters. Okay. And some people are just not very good at closing that distance. And when I boxed, we didn't have to be, because often we boxed in range. You, everything was done in range. But 
you'll find in martial arts sparring and in MMA and stuff like that, the distance is much greater. But I really don't care about that stuff. I care about self-defense and straight combat. And sometimes the best defense is that good offense. So in a situation like that, I want to be able to close that gap without my opponent being able to understand how I got to him and already have him down on the ground while I'm affecting my escape. That's why I want to learn how to do that. So the, one of the very first things you'll find us learning is the closing the gap. Then you will find defensive techniques. And defensive techniques are exactly that. Guy's coming in with an attack, I'm throwing my block, and then I'm retaliating. I'm teaching the student how to actually throw counter techniques. Later on, I'm teaching them how to evade and throw counter techniques, and eventually how to simply nail the guy before he even completely develops a full technique, which is the idea behind the interception. Okay. Finally, you're going to find that we have offensive combinations. Offensive combinations are exactly that. They're combinations that can be used going backwards or forwards. Now, when I say offensive combinations, people often think to themselves, oh, it's moving forward. No, it's not. What the idea behind it is that I'm using this technique, of course, to neutralize my opponent in a sparring situation to dominate my opponent, to, to, to score more techniques on him than he's scored against, uh, scored against me. And I want you to keep in mind one of the purposes behind this is I'm a big guy and I hit really hard and I've been hit really hard. But every once in a while you'll find that guy who says, I'll take a punch to give a punch. Okay? I don't want to do that. That requires an amount of durability that now that I'm sliding towards the age of 50, which is by no means old, but it requires a level of durability that I simply don't have and I simply don't want to give. Not only that, I think it's stupid. I have no intention of giving a punch to take a punch. Um, so that being the case, I want to be able to hit him without him hitting me. Offensive combinations are a great, a great way to do that. They teach the flow. They teach you how to flow from technique to technique. They teach you how to flow from range to range. And they teach you how to uh, uh, flow from um, offensive t or from toolbox to toolbox, from punch to kick back to punch again. And so you're going to see a lot of offensive combinations as well. Some of them are straight out of kickboxing. Some of them are straight out of Shotokan. A lot out of Kempo and Kung Fu. Um, very simple techniques. As with the offensive techniques, as you get into the further um, um, uh, belts, you're going to see a lot of them are based on footwork and hidden footwork and hiding techniques from the opponent's eye. And you'll even see some of that in the very first white belt techniques where we're hiding the footwork with the use of a back fist in situations where we cross our legs. So there's are there more techniques out there that can be done than these? Absolutely, tons of them. They're, the combinations are endless. These are basic techniques that are designed to help our students get the information, get the experience, and get the drilling that they need in order to be able to spar effectively, and then take that sparring and apply it to their actual self-defense situations, which is always our emphasis. I hope you do enjoy this.